how's it going everyone in this video we're going to be discussing liquidity what it is why it's important and how you can use it in your trading if you've been around the smart money space for any length of time i'm pretty sure you've heard this term being tossed around a lot but the question is how many beginner traders actually understand what it is and how to use it a lot of advanced and professional traders talk about liquidity in a way that you can tell that they assume everyone knows what they mean and most times beginners don't know what they mean and so in this video we're going to unpack liquidity we're going to dive deep it's going to be very beginner friendly you're going to learn a lot and i'm confident this is going to make a huge impact in your trading if that sounds like something you're interested in let's jump right into it So understanding liquidity, what is liquidity? When we talk about liquidity, what we're essentially referring to are resting orders in the marketplace. Pretty simple, resting orders in the marketplace. Now these orders could be buy orders or they could be sell orders. Okay. The algorithm that delivers price and yes, there is an algorithm that delivers price. The algorithm that delivers price in the marketplace is drawn to one of two things it's drawn to imbalances or liquidity and liquidity is the focus of this video okay these two things act as a magnet for price and they draw price towards them so if we're going to be successful in our trading it is crucial for us to understand what liquidity is where it can be found in the chart and how we can take advantage of it now, if the market is constantly being drawn to, li to liquidity and we're constantly making decisions as traders as to is the market going to go up or it's going to go down. If the market is being drawn to liquidity, it stands to reason that understanding what it is and where to find it in the chart and how to use it could place the odds in our favor when we're anticipating where price is likely to go. Now, there are two types of liquidity in the marketplace. There's buy side liquidity or buy stops. There's sell side liquidity or sell stops. In order to understand what each type of liquidity really is, we will need to take a closer look at what happens when you place a trade in the market. Now, this is the part that most people often don't teach, not because they don't know it but because they assume, like I mentioned in the intro, that most people know what they mean. So they don't teach it, but it is crucial in your understanding of what liquidity really is and how you can leverage it in your trading. So what happens when you place a trade? Say you enter a buy trade in the marketplace. What is important to understand is your buy trade has different components. It's got an entry, it's got a take profit, and it's got a stop loss. Your take profit and your stop loss are both orders. They are orders to your broker that are triggered based on the price point they are at. If your stop loss is at 30, 40.5, your instruction to the broker is... At that price point, take me out of the trade. If your take profit is at 3090.60, your instruction to the broker is take me out of the trade at that price point. So in essence, those instructions, your stop loss and your take profit are orders. So when you enter a buy order, when you enter a buy trade, that buy trade technically has two orders within it. It has an order for you to exit the position in a profit or exit the position in a loss. Every trade has these three components. Your entry, your take profit, and your stop loss. And every trade has two orders within it. A take profit and a stop loss. Now, it is very 
possible for you to enter a trade and not have a take profit or a stop loss. A lot of beginner traders do that. And if you do that, the odds of you blowing your account extremely high. So we're going to assume that most traders are using a stop loss and most traders have a take profit. So the key point I want to land with this slide here is that your take profit is an order. It's an order that gets triggered when price gets to a specific point. Your stop loss is also an order that gets triggered when price gets to a specific point. Pretty simple. So every order has two other orders within it. Let's move on. And let's focus on your stop loss for a moment. The market works based off of order pairing. Now, what does that mean in layman's terms, right? Buyers and sellers are constantly being paired with each other. That's what it means in a nutshell. Okay. Now, if that is true, what it means is for every buy order, there must be a corresponding sell order. Very simple. I mean, if you go to the market and you want to buy something, you can only buy if someone is selling something. Right. And if you're selling, you can only sell when someone is willing to buy what you're selling. Okay. So very, very simple. For every buy order in the marketplace, there must be a corresponding sell order. And for every sell order, there must be a corresponding buy order. Now, remember, we established on the previous slide that your take profit is an order. Your stop loss is also an order. Keep that in mind. So when you enter a buy order, the way you get out of this trade is by selling. That's how you get out of a buy order. You get out by selling. If you enter a sell order, the way you get out of this order is by buying. Okay. When you enter a buy order, in order to exit that order, a sell order needs to be triggered. When you enter a sell order, when you enter a sell trade, when you decide to go short, the way you get out of that short is that a buy order needs to be triggered. Very simple. So in a buy trade, your stop loss is an order, as we've said. But what type of order is it? It's a sell stop order or a sell order. If, for example, I buy a pair of shoes from you, you sold me a pair of shoes. Let's say you sold me a pair of shoes or let's say I bought a pair of shoes from you. Okay. Now, say, for example, I don't want those pair of shoes anymore. And I want my money back. What do I have to do? I have to sell those shoes back to you. Pretty simple. So I buy a pair of shoes from you. I want to reverse that transaction. What I have to do is bring those shoes, give you the shoes and take my money back. So I reverse my buy transaction with a sell transaction. The same thing in the marketplace. You enter a buy, you have a stop loss. Your stop loss is an order. It's an order to the broker. But your stop loss is a sell stop order. A sell stop order is required to exit a buy order, to exit a buy trade. Okay? In the case of a sell trade, your stop loss is also an order. Your stop loss in a sell trade is a buy stop order. So, if you sold me something, you sold me a pair of shoes. Let's use that same example. You sold me a pair of shoes and you wanted those shoes back from me. And you came and you said, I want my shoes back. Remember, you sold the shoes to me. 
and I paid you money for it and you come back and you say, I want those shoes back. What do you need to do? You need to buy those shoes from me because I paid you money for it. So you need to come and say, hey, those shoes I sold to you, I like them back. Here's the money for the shoes. And then you can take the shoes. So you so you would reverse your sell, your selling. You're selling those shoes to me. You would reverse it by buying those shoes. Okay? Pretty simple. So your stop loss in a sell trade is a buy stop order. You anticipated that price would drop. So you entered a sell order, a sell trade. You went short. But if price starts to rally instead, you exit that position by telling the broker, take me out at this price. I'm no longer interested in this trade. Right? To do that, your sell order must be exited by a corresponding buy order. So you sold the shoes. You're no longer interested in selling those shoes. You exit it with a corresponding buy. You buy those shoes back. Okay? So your stop loss being triggered when you are short is actually a buy order being executed. This is what happens when you enter and exit a trade. Now, some of what I just said may have gone over your head and that's perfectly fine. You're not going to catch everything in this video watching it just once. So you may need to watch it again and again. And if you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to subscribe, leave a like on the video and hit that notification bell because there's going to be a follow up to this video and you don't want to miss it. Okay. Now, in a nutshell, what we're saying is this. When you enter a buy trade, okay, when you enter a buy trade, in order to exit it, you need to sell. You need to have a stop order. But what kind of stop order, what kind of stop loss order do you need to have? You need to have a sell stop order to exit a buy trade. So your stop order in a buy trade is a sell, is a sell stop order or sell side liquidity when you enter a sell trade when you decide to short in the marketplace okay the way you exit that sell trade is through a stop order a sell a buy stop order or buy side liquidity so your stop loss in a buy position or in a buy trade and your stop loss in a sell trade are all resting orders. And what did we say liquidity is? Liquidity is resting orders, resting orders in the marketplace. Okay, so for everyone that goes long in the market, they have sell side liquidity resting in the market for everyone that goes short in the market they have buy side liquidity resting in the market that's what liquidity is that's what liquidity is it's resting orders and these resting orders can be in the form of sell stop orders in the case of a buy trade and buy stop orders in the case of a sell trade very simple now where can we find liquidity in the charts and now we're getting to the good stuff where can we find liquidity in the in the charts liquidity can be found in two places below swing lows and above swing highs all right now look at this schematic here price came down and then began to rally as price began to rally there are people that are going to start entering long positions the people that are going to start entering buy orders buy trades now when they enter their buy trade where is their stop loss going to be resting now just going to go back one slide look at this schematic here this is a schematic for a buy order your entry price is somewhere here your take profit is somewhere here your stop loss is somewhere here so your stop loss is below your entry price so when i come here now and you look at this schematic anyone that went long here the stop loss is going to be resting down somewhere here all right and most retail traders are trained to put their stop loss 
below swing lows. So you're going to have people placing stop orders here for their long trade. What kind of stop order? Sell stop order or sell side liquidity. Also, we have these relative equal lows here. Price drops, rallies, drops, and then rallies again. Retail and most traders are going to interpret this as support. What do the books teach? Put your stop loss below an area of support. So anyone that went long here and went long here is going to have their stop loss sitting below these relative equal lows. But since they are long, what kind of stop loss order is it? It's going to be a sell stop. A sell stop is how they reverse out of their buy position. So they're going to have sell stops resting here or sell side liquidity. Conversely, if we have a swing high, there are people that are going to go short to capture this move to the downside. Where are they going to put their stop loss? I'm going to go back one slide again. This schematic represents a sell trade. This is the entry around here. This is the take profit around here. And then you have the stop above the entry price. So anyone that sold here, their stop is going to be resting somewhere here. But if you're selling, how do you exit a sell trade? You exit it by buying. You exit it with a buy stop or buy side liquidity. Also, price rallies here, drops here, rallies again, and then drops. Here we have relatively equal highs. What is retail and most traders going to see this as? They're going to see this as resistance. So anyone that sold here on this move to the downside will place their stop loss above here. Anyone that sold here will place their stop loss above here. So these relatively equal highs are going to have stop loss orders resting above them. What type of stop loss orders? Buy stop orders or buy side liquidity. So below swing lows, we're going to have sell side liquidity. Above swing highs, we're going to have buy side liquidity. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Let's look at some chart examples. So in this screenshot here, you can see we have a swing low here, a swing low here, a swing low here, and a swing low here. So anyone that went long from here or from here or from here or from here, where are their stop loss orders going to be resting? Below here, below here, below here, and below here. So what's going to be resting up below all of these swing lows? Sell stops. Remember, they went long. To exit their long position, they need to sell. So you're going to have sell side liquidity resting below these lows here. Here as well, we have relative equal lows. We have a low here, price came down, and then price came down again. So these are relatively equal lows. Anyone that went long from here, or from here, or from here, where is your stop loss order going to be resting? Here. What type of stop loss order? Sell stops or sell side liquidity. Now we have a buy side liquidity example. We have a swing high here a swing high here, another swing high here. Okay. What's going to be resting above here? Buy side liquidity. Why? Anyone that went short here or here or here, where is their stop loss going to be resting? Above here, here, and here. What type of stop loss order? If they sold, it's going to be a buy stop. A buy stop would reverse their short. So you're going to have buy side liquidity resting above the swing high, above the swing high, and above the swing high. And then here as well, we have a relatively equal high example of buy side liquidity. Anyone that sold from here down or from here or from here, the stop loss order is going to be resting above here. What kind of stop loss order for a short? It's going to be a buy stop 
order or buy side liquidity okay now the algorithm that delivers price is constantly hunting for liquidity all right it knows what you are learning today it knows that retail traders place their stop loss orders above old highs and below old lows and the role of the algorithm is to pair orders so if a large institution wants to enter a short position the algorithm will need to find willing buyers in order to pair up with that short order now this is a very deep topic and well beyond the scope of this video for now just know that the algorithm is constantly seeking to pair buyers and sellers and the way it does that is to identify where those buy or sell orders are resting aka liquidity in other words it is constantly hunting liquidity around swing lows and swing highs now remember what i said in the beginning the market is constantly being drawn to areas of liquidity and the reason the market is constantly being drawn to areas of liquidity is because the algorithm is constantly seeking to pair orders between buyers and sellers that's all it's seeking to do so if someone goes short if there's a short position entered into the marketplace in order for that short position to be triggered it needs to have a counterparty order it needs to have an opposite side of the order for any seller to be able to sell an item someone has to be willing to buy correct same thing in the marketplace if a large institution wants to enter a short position the algorithm will need to pair that short with willing buyers. Where is it going to find willing buyers? Below, sorry, above an old high. So if the market wants to drop, if the market is going to drop, what does it make sense for the market to do? It makes sense for the market, makes sense for the algorithm to find where willing buyers are and that's why more often than not before we have a significant drop in price you're going to see that price is going to rally and take out a swing high or take out relative equal highs it's not coincidence folks it is solely because the algorithm goes above a swing high or above relatively equal highs to trigger buy side liquidity and pair those buy stop orders with sell, sell orders. This is the reason behind stop hunts. Okay. What is a stop hunt? Now, have you ever wondered? Why sometimes your stop loss gets triggered and then price reverses in your anticipated direction afterwards? This is what we call a stop hunt. In the example I just gave, for a short, price is going to drop. But more often than not, I counsel you, I advise you, check this out for yourself. Go into the charts. Study it for yourself. Almost every single time, before we have a significant drop in price, price is going to rally and take out a swing high or take out relatively equal highs and almost every time before we have a significant rally to the upside price is going to drop first and take out a swing low or relatively equal lows why because the algorithm needs to pair orders so if you went long for example and place your stop loss sell side liquidity below an old low and price came and stopped you out before moving higher that is referred to as a stop hunt what it means is that there were participants in the marketplace that wanted to go long but they want to do so at a low price and the algorithm knows this 
where can the algorithm find willing sellers at a low price below an old low so the algorithm wants to take price higher there are market participants that want to go long but in order for the algorithm to do that it needs to pair those long orders with sellers at a low price or with sell side liquidity and where can we find sell side liquidity below old lows that's why the algorithm would normally drop price below an old low trigger the sell stop orders there pair them up with long orders and then price starts to take off so when the algorithm takes out an old low it sends an influx of sell stop orders into the market it floods the market with sellers these sellers provide the perfect counterparty to other market participants that want to go long their longs are paired with the sell stop orders or sell side liquidity that has been triggered like i said a few minutes ago watch this video a few times a lot of what i'm saying you may not get it all in just one go but this is the crux of the market this is what makes the market gyrate up and down this is it and if you understand this it will make a huge impact in your trading okay how can we use liquidity in our trading for that you need to subscribe to the channel that's going to be in the next video that's going to be part two okay we're going to delve into how to actually use liquidity to trade if it is true that there's an algorithm and if it is true that the algorithm is constantly seeking liquidity above old highs and below old lows how do we use this knowledge to execute trades how do we use this knowledge to exit trades we're going to look at that in our next video but for now watch this video a few times everything a lot of what i may have said may have gone over your head it's perfectly fine it's perfectly normal watch it a few times take notes go into the chart you saw those chart examples i gave you try and identify swing highs and swing lows and mark sell side liquidity and buy side liquidity study what happens when price trades above and below old highs and old lows study what happens and in the next video we're going to dive even deeper so be sure to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for part two we're going to dive deeper but this already is a lot of information and it may have sounded very technical but these markets that we are in are complex and to be a successful trader it's going to take you understanding this but when you do it will completely change how you view the marketplace if all the market is doing is hunting for liquidity and if all price does is gravitate towards areas of liquidity understanding where these areas are understanding how to identify them will increase the odds of you being a profitable and successful trader immensely so thanks again for watching be sure to subscribe to the channel for part two like i've mentioned um also i have a discord where i a free discord um where i help aspiring traders um guide them we do weekly analysis we answer questions we discuss fundamentals we do a whole lot right i'm going to drop the link in the description below if you want to join be part of the family uh come through learn some more in-depth stuff stuff that i have not even shared yet on youtube check out the link in the description to my discord and like i said subscribe to the channel for part two and i'll catch you in the next one